All right, Dauphiné stage five. Got some highlights here. Can't really find any race footage. But basically, Adam Yates attacks now. It was a good tempo set by his team. Uh, and then Team Sky came to the front instead of a bit of tempo. Garrett Thomas reacts straight away. Bardet is looking good. Mark Seller is struggling. Mark Seller went for a little bit of, attack, of an attack early, which was stupid. He should have waited until the big boys went. Um, and you can see Yates is looking pretty relaxed. Garrett Thomas' mouth open doesn't look too bad. You can see a we've got a couple people struggling at the back, like Alaphilippe, a bit surprising there. Janny Moscon, not too surprising. Nibli doesn't look great, but he doesn't really want to look great at this time of year. And Dan Martin, as soon as it came back together, just launched it, and everyone was like, yep, that's the stage. So Dan Martin just absolutely launched it. We can see Emmanuel Bookman, who will have his power data in a bit, is coming back. Tal Gagan Hart is doing an outrageous ride again, who goes to the front now. Kofidis, I believe that's Harada, um, is trying to launch across, but instead, but you basically have Team Sky. This is way back. This is just irrelevant. Jamie Moss gone up the back, getting dropped. Uh, but we have Tal Gagan Hart on the front, trying to just get it back. Uh, for his teammate Garrett Thomas, and then Garrett Thomas uh, with a couple of Ks to go. Watch this guy. Ah, cheerio, man. <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious. Poor Panda bloke got knocked over. But Dan Martin has been chased by a panda before when he won his Liège, Baston Liège, um, and he seems to like it when the pandas chase him because he also won this stage as well. He's got a good gap now. He's absolutely flying up this climb in the big ring, 24K an hour or something. Absolutely nuts. He's looking good. You can see Tal Gagan Hart's shaking all over the place, does his turn, pulls off here, and Garrett Thomas is like, right, boys, I'm going. And it looks like Bardet can respond straight away, but Bardet struggles here. You can see the gap slowly opens, but Bardet gets across, and I was like, oh, Bardet, he'll just hold his wheel. Should be all right. Maybe he'll attack across. But Garrett Thomas around this corner kicks again. Um, you'll see just this little bit. He just does a little kick here, and Bardet, as you can see, has to get out of the saddle, really struggling. And this is when Garrett Thomas starts to make a big gap. Manuel Bookman, Adam Yates, uh, and Harada are all struggling. Pierre Roland as well is not, not doing great. Uh, and around this corner, I think Bardé says, cheerio, I've had enough. Garrett Thomas in that big ring, just absolutely driving it across. This this climb sort of suits him. It's not mega steep, maybe 6% here, 6 7%. Um, so it's good for Garrett Thomas. You can see there's a little bit of a steep pinch here, and it looked like uh, Garrett Thomas might come across to Dan Martin. But in reality, it was going to be always a hard, hard like job to do because Dan Martin is a real solid climber. Uh, he's one of the best in the world, really. Like I just in the Tour de France the last couple of years, like last year was unlucky. I think he probably would have finished on the podium if he hadn't had that crash. Um, and getting across to Dan Martin is always going to be tough. But Garen Thomas had a good ride, um, pretty solid. He said he took this corner really gingerly. You can see him soft pedaling here because he really doesn't want to crash again. Because he's had quite a bad reputation recently of crashing. Dan Martin is sort of out of contention with the GC. He celebrates there, realizes the line's actually a long way to go, gets back on the pedals, um, and still manages to get a good victory. Uh, for Team UAE Emirates. They haven't really had many victories. It's been quite a bad year for them. Uh, but it was a real solid stage. One main climb, uh, really, at the end, and the rest of it wasn't too tough. So Garrett Thomas comes across in second. I'll just pause it here. This is the stage. So you can see Emmanuel Bookman, 16 seconds back. Uh, Danny Navarro, sorry for his confidence man. Bardet lost a bit of time. Zacharin. Uh, Guillaume Martin, he's doing well. Oh, Toll Hook. It's a good bloke, good bloke. He did well in California as well. So he's definitely one to look out for, that old Toll Hook. And Adam Yates also did well. So anyway, we'll go over to Manuel Bookman's power data. So you can see here, 276 weighted average power. So I'd say it's probably maybe 280, 290, normalized for 4 hours 40, which is about maybe 4.8 watts per kilo for him, I believe. I think he's just around around 60 kilos or so. But anyway, you can see the stage parkour here in the top right-hand corner. A little bit of climb here, nothing too crazy. Big descent, then one big climb here, basically a fat climb. Um, and then short, and then another little, just a mini kick from 999 meters to only a 300 meter vertical climb, so nothing crazy. And you can go down and see the power, 470 watts, which is basically his just last push to the line, uh, which is 7.6 watts per kilo, which is pretty solid um, after doing this for such a long stage. You can see this is basically the climb, so going into the climb, he averaged... 370 watts and then you'll see up here as soon as the climb begins he really starts to ramp it up so we'll go from let's say this bit for 13 minutes he held 380 watts which is pretty big boy which is 6.13 watts per kilo so we can get the old maths calculator out uh, and see what his weight is his weight is 62 kilos more or less he might be a little lighter it's always hard to tell like I don't know how accurate their Strava weight is, but around 6.1 to 6.3 watts per kilo, let's say. I mean, they probably aren't going to put them, their weight heavier. Like, people always like to have the ego and pretend they're lighter. So, probably 6.1 to 6.3 watts per kilo, um, which is pretty 
pretty decent effort. It's not absolutely nuts um, for these guys. Uh, in the Jira, they were definitely going harder. Um, but I think the thing is, obviously, these guys aren't in top, top form because they still got four weeks to go for the Tour de France. They don't want to, at the end of this race, sorry, so maybe five weeks now, they don't want to be in mega, mega good form. But you can see here, like, it's still pretty solid. Like, after racing, this is the fourth stage, or our fifth stage, fourth stage, depends. I mean, the prologue counts as a stage. Uh, and they really do know how to launch it. You can see on this climb here, um, it wasn't actually mega hard, 313 watts. So climb for about five watts per kilo for 51 minutes, which for those guys is like a good tempo. They, most of those guys could hold that five watts per kilo fresh for maybe three, four hours. So it's not, it was, it's like tiring obviously for them, but it's not like full gas. Um, and I think the rest of the day it wasn't, wasn't mega hard it seems. Um, and then just that last climb is really, but you can see here, like, the, for this last climb, it's uh, it's pretty spiky power, but you can see it was, like, decent thing. And then when Dan Martin attacked, that was really where the big boys... As you can see, there's a little surge here when he tried to get onto Danny Navarro's wheel, and then it just sort of rode a steady, steady tempo. Um, again, a little attack here. I think this is potential... Sorry, that's when Dan Martin attacked. He tried to respond. Then he set back into a tempo, and then this is when he tried to respond to Danny Navarro. And then after that, he just settled back down into... Uh, a good tempo. Uh, no, uh, yeah, yeah. And just settled back down into a good tempo, basically tailgating hard, just dragged him up a little bit of the climb. And then you can see in the end, he had this little sprint here, um, which was 500 watts for 20 seconds, but probably a little bit more. Yeah, 540 watts for 20 seconds, which is pretty solid at the end of a stage. Uh, but there you go. If you want to be winning Dauphiné stages like Dan Martin, you need to put in fat attacks. Probably at like an 800 watt attack and basically be able to hold maybe six and a half watts per kilo for that last five minutes after climbing at 6.1, 6.2 watts per kilo. So it's really the thing that's always incredible about this is the way they can attack and then just sustain the same power um, afterwards and just keep going away. Like it's actually crazy because you think like when Adam Yates attacked, that was quite hard to follow. And then when Dan Martin went, it was just like, he was like, oh, everyone was suffering. And I was like, I'm just going to go. And it's like, <laughs> it's pretty nuts to really be able to do that and then just hold it off. Um, but yeah, it was an incredible ride by Dan Martin. Good ride from young Manuel Bookman, who's looking good for the Tour de France. Should get top 10, I believe, um, based on what he's doing now. It's always hard to tell. But anyway, good bloke. I enjoy that he releases his power data. Always love having some power data to have a look at. So yeah, this is at 20k an hour and a 7% gradient, which, you know, is decent, decently fast. Um, but obviously he was he was just drafting, so it wasn't like he was going full gas. They have been faster up there. Maybe that was all today. I'm not sure. Uh, let's have a look. 7th of June. Yeah, so you can see it wasn't, it was, wasn't crazy. Yeah, James Knox, again, 294 watts. He's... He's a little less, so yeah, that's probably, again, 5 watts per kilo for him. So they're climbing around 5 watts per kilo, which is, um, yeah, decent decent, decent effort. But like if you're on the front, obviously, you're doing a little bit more in the pack of 5 watts per kilo. And then bang out 6.3 watts per kilo for the last climb, 6.1, 6.3 watts per kilo, and get, be able to res respond to those surges, which is, that's the real hard thing. So you can see the difference in speed, just 7% gradient, 24k an hour, 23.6, and then um, on the other one, it was like 20k an hour, and that's, that's sort of the difference. Uh, pretty fast climb, 24, 23, 24k an hour, you're getting a good draft, you're definitely getting a good draft, um, so yeah, that's why when people attack and they hold it off and there's like a peloton behind, it's pretty incredible because you're getting a good draft when you're sitting in. So anyway, cheers for watching, hope this is insightful, hope this is useful data if you ever want to be a pro, um, <laughs> not sure how many of my audience wants to be a pro, but anyway, it's all good, uh, so cheers for watching, uh, I'll probably have some more analysis uh, in the future, so cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next video.